Hey guys, Jake here again for Hogtown Spokes Tech Tuesday. If I seem a little bit out of it, it's because I was cursing customers in the back, boozing on the job, eating the leftover lasagna from my mom's basement, and dreaming of spending all of my wages on PS4. What were we doing today? Hey guys, Jake here again for Hogtown Spokes Tech Tuesday. This is part four. Really quickly, on your left, you'll see our proprietary products as, as well as tuning mountain bikes here in Toronto. We make the industry's most advanced bike protection products. Um, they're made from genuine Kydex sheeting, they're thermal formed, and they have a host of EDC trail features, which are incredibly useful. It's completely original Canadian design. You can see everything we sell on our website at hogtownspokes.com. Click on the web store. On your right, you'll see our service sign. Throughout this summer, we'll be doing some impromptu trail repair um, throughout Toronto's trails, just troubleshooting any emergency mechanicals for people, so look for that sign. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about what is probably my favorite aspect of bike mechanics along with brakes, drivetrains. In my opinion, drivetrains are the area where uh, the men from the boys are truly separated, if you will amongst bike mechanics. Um, it separates that thorough professional mechanic who will really keep working for that perfect shift, that crisp indexing from you know Joe Schmo at your LBS, who'll just be like, ah, eh, it's good enough, it's not my bike, and send you on your way. Fundamentally not what we represent. We are perfectionists through and through with every single bicycle that we take in. So essentially the, the proposition of this video, um, somewhat paradoxically given that we stand for doing things the right way, but also reinforcing that is the idea of potentially running a hybrid drivetrain. What is that? Is it possible? How much is it possible? So on and so forth. Um, and so just a, a quick background to what that means. Historically with the two biggest uh, drivetrain makers, the titans of the industry, Shimano and SRAM, their products are systems engineered, and that's especially the case now with the new 12-speed stuff, Eagle and, and XTR, respectively. And as a result, you're supposed to systems install it. Systems engineering is basically just a, a, an integrated approach to technology. So SRAM is setting out to make a 12-speed derailleur exactly uh, corresponding to their 12-speed shifter and exactly optimized by their 12 speed shifter and their chain and their chain ring. And Shimano will do the same thing. Their new Hyperglide Plus um, XTR cassettes, which are supposed to be shiftable under load, they only work with the Shimano chain and the Shimano shifter uh, and the Shimano free hub. That sounds a bit cynical as if it's just a cash grab. I'll leave that up to interpretation. Um, I'm a little skeptical of dismissing it that way. There's a lot of science and time that goes into this stuff. Systems engineering is, is, is an area of, of science that has um, huge credibility. There's a lot of empirical evidence that it works across many industries. And I think it is totally relevant in the bike industry as well. What we wanna do in this video is, is take a, a critical lens though to how exactly how necessary that is. And so essentially our proposition here is can I take my current 11-speed Shimano M8000 drivetrain and potentially optimize it further by doing two things. Integrating the new Shimano M9100 12-11-speed shifter in place of my current M8000 XT shifter, get a little bit crisper shifting, and then two, can I do that and then take off my Shimano 11-speed XT derailleur and put a SRAM GX Eagle in there and ideally get the best of everything, the crispest shifting, the smoothest derailleur action, the most precise derailleur action, and then tie all of that together with the, part, the hybrid part that's already on my bicycle and will probably be a permanent fixture, and that is the Sunrace 11 to 50 third party cassette. Ah, that's more like it. Had the MX-80 with these prices existed in 1789, I don't think the French would have revolted. Alas. 
So that, that will tell you right away that there is one variable, at least with 11 speed drivetrains, that can be substituted in as a hybrid, and that's the cassette. Sunrace, I think, has conclusively proven that you can do that. And that need arose because cassettes are really expensive. Proportionally speaking, they're probably the most expensive part of the new high-end drivetrains, the, the high-capacity drivetrains. For example, with SRAM's XX1 Eagle, you'll spend the better part of a rent payment replacing that iconic gold cassette. Sweet mama. I don't think my life insurance is that much. It's expensive because it's made from a one-piece block. Um, it's CNC to death. It's incredibly light. It's incredibly strong. It's incredibly crisp. But it's still a lot of money. And Shimano's new XTR is the same. So I, I've come to that intuition for a long time now, and that's why I'm a Sunrace cassette guy. But I just want to see if, if maybe um, spending a touch more, we can optimize that drivetrain with fancier derailleur or shifter parts. Or the other way to look at it is spending a touch less versus buying a true SRAM or Shimano systems engineered drivetrain, can I get it to shift just as well? And by spending a, a touch less, I'm referring to having the chain not match and this cassette, of course, not match. What I'm doing is not supposed to be possible. Um, certainly when it comes to the derailleur, Eagle is never supposed to be substituted in with Shimano, certainly Shimano 11 speed. I want to hold that to the empirical test and really see whether that's that's backed by the results uh, and then with the new shifter there's been some some mixed opinions on the internet um, i've seen the direct question posed can you use the m9100 shifter with m8000 11 speed the answer seems to be no people are skeptical however there is one uh, good youtube video uh, by a uh, a noted YouTuber who, who really knows his drivetrains in which he did manage to use that shifter with, I believe it was an existing M9000 XTR drivetrain. I'll link the video below to my YouTube colleague. His stuff is, is certainly worth checking out. Now, despite what he has done though, I, I wanna, wanna try this for myself because what some of the forum postings have indicated and what I was vaguely aware of as well was that although the new M9100 shifter, which I have right here, does have a mode converter on the back that allows you with a flathead screwdriver to switch between 11 and 12 speed, it may not be a true 11 speed in the traditional Shimano sense in that there was a lot of convolution when the new XTR group set came out because Shimano had a production delay and, and originally what they were going to do is offer two 12-speed cassettes as well as an 11-speed cassette as part of the 12-speed family that would presumably have 12-speed spacing. And they were gearing that at this really niche cross-country focused audience who wanted just incredibly tight succession between gears. That has since been done away with. And in the production models that are available at retail, at least in North America, you only have a choice between two 12-speed cassettes. This 11 doesn't seem to be available to my knowledge, um, but the shifter still has the mode converter. So I don't know if Shimano just couldn't recall these without it being crazy expensive, or if you know perhaps it's, it's, it does work with uh, an XTR setup, um, it could be that it just works with existing 11 speed cassettes that top out at 46 teeth or even 42 teeth. For some reason, they've still brought this mode converted shifter to market, even though the original M9100 11 speed cassette seems to have disappeared in North America. So we're going to have to really see if this does work. Um, and if not, I'll eventually, if not go to 12 speed, be able to offer this to a happy customer who is going to 12 speed. And so it's a useful item for us to have in our inventory. And there's no substitute for testing stuff in the wild and 
actually seeing it before you recommend it to a customer. So just to be able to hold this and touch this and talk about its features, I would say it was well worth the investment. So that's our proposition. We're going to explore a hybrid drivetrain with my permanent hybrid fixture, my Sunrace 11 to 50 11 speed cassette, and then introducing two new variables, the new M9100 XTR shifter with the mode converter between 12 speed and 11 speed, as well as radically trying to put a SRAM GX Eagle 12 speed derailleur on that drivetrain. If it works, we'll have the ultimate Franken train. If it doesn't work, then maybe in pursuit of that perfect drivetrain, we assess, we decide which variables truly are substitution capable, and maybe I get myself an XTR 11 speed M9000 derailleur and do things the Shimano way. So let's go Frank and wrench it. I'll go through a normal shift up the cassette and then down the cassette, excuse me, and then I'll do multi-shift as well, both up and down. And you'll notice that overall it's quite, it's quite effortless except for the jump uh, between the um, eighth and ninth gears. There's a little bit of a lag and some noise there. I have done everything under the sun to take that out. And yes, my uh, derailleur hanger as a professional mechanic is very straight. Um, the issue I think is just there's a slight manufacturing tolerance with the spacing there. And that's fine. I mean, for, for what I paid for this Sunrace 11 to 50 cassette, there should be something like that somewhere in there. Um, I wouldn't be doing justice to the uh, brilliant design and then production at SRAM and Shimano if I said that you could get a, a cassette as good as XX1 Eagle or the new XTR M9100 for a fourth of the price. That's not how it works. And fortunately, that noise occurs uh, on the upper part of the middle of the cassette rather than the jump to the biggest cog. Uh, which would be a lot more problematic and on paper more likely for that to occur. So let me shift through and I'll show you how overall uh, XT M8000 is an excellent drivetrain and group set. There's that problematic cog. But then we're smooth sailing from there. multi-shift multi-shift is a feature that does what it says it allows you to throw up the three to four cogs uh, moving in the easy direction in one uh, push of the lever and then you can let off uh, or, or downshift into harder cogs um, at, a two, at a two cog jump at a time for when you're looking to pick up speed. This is a technology that various shifter makers now possess. Uh, but to my knowledge, and I would have to check if there's a patent, there very likely is, but to my knowledge, only Shimano does multi-shift where you can drop more than one cog heading back down the cassette um, towards your, your tighter gear ratios. I have here the XT M8000 shifter with blanking plate attached on the right. That's my cat Georgie. Hey buddy. And then on the left, uh, the new M9100 XTR shifter. As you can see, um, similar shape. Obviously, um, the, the core of the design has carried over with the dual release multi-shift levers. They're both 22.2 uh, .2 band clamps. Some key differences though, obviously the XTR is a little bit more um, subtle. It's got kind of this murdered out appearance. Um, they've also incorporated a hollow feature on the band clamp um, to save weight. Shimano has nicely gotten away from this idea of only associating XTR with um, spandex XC riders on a diet. Uh, they realize that this new group set is also geared at enduro, but if you can make something just as strong without adding extra weight, that's not a, a bad area to trade to uh, trim some 
excess fat. The key difference though, really comes down to beyond the operation, of course, what's on the levers. And you'll notice that on the M9100 here, there's that wonderful textured traction pad that's rubber. And apparently it's replaceable. Yep, there's a screw there. Whereas on the M8000, we have those dimples, which are great, but I've always found you, you typically need to add um, some friction tape, some skateboard tape there just to round out how tactile this is. And then in terms of cables, um, I always use high quality Jaguar cables, but the cable that comes stock on the M9100 and previous XTRs is Shimano's top tier um, OptiSlick polymer coated cable. A lot of technology in this, surprisingly, but apparently it's um, quite something to engineer and then produce. Uh, and I have used it and I have found that it does, um, does work really well. Maybe not noticeably better than Jaguar, but it certainly rounds out the quality of, a, of an XTR shifter feel. So that's a nice touch and should be for what a XTR shifter retails for. Here on the left, the Shimano Diore M8000GS derailleur, and on the right, SRAM's GX Eagle derailleur. Controversial statement time. Da -da! If you press Shimano, they would probably make the case that the um, XT, whether it's M8000 or the new M8100, doesn't really have an analogy in SRAM, that it's uh, a terrific group set that is just below the top tier and that SRAM can't answer that because um, XX1 Eagle and X01 Eagle as well as the AXS versions uh, really are, are co-equals and then there's, there's quite a step down to GX Eagle. On the contrary, if you were to press SRAM, they would probably make the case that GX Eagle is as good as XT or even better. And my theory, my hunch at this point is that they're right. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, I'll start with the one that I unfortunately can't show you while I film, but is super relevant, and that's the stiffness of the design. You want a stiff derailleur because a stiff derailleur doesn't flex under torque and it indexes better. Um, the, the XT is by no means a soft derailleur. It's a very high-end mech, but even in the shorter design, you can flex it. Eagle by contrast is stiff. Uh, this, this is so stiff that, you know, when you first take it out of the box, you think that there's, there's something wrong with it or that it's seized, but it's really just very firm. And even once you break that grease in, it always resists being flexed uh, and even the, the cage extending forward. That's a good sign. Um, every time I've seen this in operation on a bike or serviced it on a bicycle, Eagle is just bam, 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 just dead straight, super stiff. The indexing is, is quite impressive. Um, and, and so that is, that is a good indication of, of slightly superior quality, I think. Hey again, Georgie. Beyond that, there are a few other advantages to the Eagle design um, carried down to GX that I think make it slightly superior to XT. The wheel has, the pulley wheels, I should say, uh, they have more teeth. These are 13 tooth and they also have a nice, at least on the, the tension pulley down here, uh, a nice narrow wide profile. Contrast that with Shimano's pulleys that are uh, historically 11 tooth that has now changed on the M9100 and 8100 series. And the reason Shimano has changed is like SRAM, they've realized that more teeth means better chain retention. Uh, let alone getting into a narrow wide profile. It also means that the chain wraps better, that it can better pick up, that the derailleur can better pick up the slack um, that's caused by needing to use extra links when you run a wide range 50 or 51 tooth cassette. So that's really nice. Um, and, I, and I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how those pulley wheels perform uh, under load and, and during normal shifting conditions. Again, I can't show you this while filming, but I have extensively 
spun these, these two pulley wheel sets, uh, which are both clean. Shimano spin nicely. There's, there's sealed bearings in there, um, but they're a little more sluggish. Granted, this is a new derailleur, but I find that SRAM's Eagle has just a little less play and spins just a little more smoothly. One area where I will give Shimano a design heads up is on the clutch. There's this really intuitive Shadow Plus clutch mechanism off when you're uh, servicing the bicycle, on when you're riding. There's no compromise there. You don't ride with the clutch off, just for the record. Whereas SRAM uses this Type 3 roller bearing clutch, which requires a, a Torx tool. You can see George loves drivetrains. It requires a Torx tool to adjust. So it's a little less intuitive, but odds are you're, you're probably not going to need to be um, making too many adjustments there. And then when it comes to servicing the bike, that little button with the lock, that's what that's for. So there's a good uh, look and, and sort of overview of why I think my hunch might be correct and why in this case I will align with uh, what would probably be the SRAM position that GX Eagle is as good as XT and maybe even better. What that also means is that as wonderful as the new XTR Max are, SRAM is, is just that much better in the sense that, you know, if Shimano's XTR is a 10 out of 10 derailleur, uh, XX1 Eagle and possibly even X01 Eagle, maybe 11 out of 10, truly unmatched derailleur designs. What's happening here is there is just enough difference in indexing uh, between 11 and 12 speed, and more importantly, between SRAM and Shimano, that the cassette is just not performing optimally. You'll see as I shift through that it's really smooth for the first six or seven cogs, and then it gets uh, little choppy and then it smooths out again but it just won't go into the big cog and then coming back down the cassette it's it's not good at all Maybe causing that is sometimes there'll be a slightly um, greater space. We're talking fractions of a millimeter into the bigger, uh, less space, I should say, into the bigger um, gears just to make that jump into more teeth, a little bit smoother for the chain. Um, and, and that's that's where you're you're hearing the rubbing both up and down because uh, the 11 speed chain with the um, pull ratio of a SRAM derailleur just isn't isn't liking that uh, that space. Alas, you saw that our attempt to put GX Eagle on the existing uh, M8000 11 speed drivetrain that I have unfortunately didn't work. It did shift uh, beautifully for the first few cogs going up and down, but I had some real issues creating enough tension to get into the big cogs um, without having too much tension to get back down into those power cogs. So I've used Koshani here, one of our Hogtown mascots, our Punisher Canuck skull, to illustrate the reasons why SRAM Eagle didn't work with this combination. One, seems to be a different pull ratio, just slightly different enough between SRAM and Shimano uh, 12 to 12 that this was a problem and certainly uh, we, we saw that with the bigger gears which is where that will be the most pronounced because going into big cogs uh, is already hard enough on the progression of a derailleur if the spacing isn't perfect that's where those crunchy noises were coming from two different spacing orientation at the hub this is a theory that I have Anyone who wants to add something to this, feel free to comment. But um, Eagle is, again, system engineered for SRAM stuff. SRAM uses the XD driver, 
which is the wider driver on their 12 speed and some 11 speed um, hubs that is designed to accommodate the 10 tooth cog that SRAM cassettes start at and then go all the way up to now a 50 tooth Eagle biggest cog. What that means though is that XD, the SRAM hub drivers are geared at, in most cases, boost spacing or certainly uh, the 142 spacing. Those of you who watched our previous episodes will know that my bike is a 135 bolt on rear. So I was able to get enough play in the limit screws in order to reach the smallest cogs, but the system was stubborn. It's not really designed to inboard that much. It's designed to sit uh, and properly actuate on a boost hub or at a minimum a 142 hub. That's, that's my theory anyway. Third reason why Eagle didn't work, there's no 11 speed converter, obviously because it's a derailleur, and there's a different enough pull ratio versus an 11 speed that it just wasn't cooperating. So this is similar to the first point, um, except that what I was saying in the first point is there seems to be a, a subtle pull ratio difference between SRAM Eagle 12 and Shimano XTR 12. Doesn't mean you still can't swap those parts, people have done it, but it, it, it does seem to be a little bit different. But then where it's really pronounced is there seems to be a big change between SRAM Eagle 12 and uh, a Shimano 11. It's just wide enough that things were getting clunky and, and kind of nasty. So Eagle, Eagle is out for the count, but overall um, it, it is super stiff. It's beautiful to look at. In the cogs that it did work in, you had that almost machine gun precise shifting. And my experience with Eagle, when you do use it in an integrated systems engineered and systems installed drivetrain, is that it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, and, it, and it probably is the leader for industry leader for crisp, almost machine-like operation of a rear derailleur. What about the XTR shifter? Or as I like to call it, the lotus flower of shifters. So even having done away with the idea of using GX Eagle, dang, uh, I'm still having some issues with the new XTR lever. It is definitely butter smooth. I love the action, but I'm just struggling to get um, up into that biggest ring there. That always takes a little bit of extra faff with a GS, um, the mid uh, shorter Shimano cage, but it certainly can be done. Um, I did it quite easily with my M8000 setup. So what I'm going to do now is just double check my chain line and make sure that I'm not uh, outboarded too far. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually remove one of the spacers on my crank set. That'll bring the chain line inward. It'll shorten it and we'll see if that makes the difference because right now I'm having to use so much tension to get into the 50 that I then can't um, let out enough tension because the setting is so high in order to get into the smaller cogs and that's a big deal. Okay, so I removed a spacer and as you can see. We're now more centered on the cassette. Um, the only reason I had an extra spacer on there is just because um, I wanted to run a slightly bigger chain ring than my frame is designed for uh, without having to cut up my um, stay protector there. But certain things need to be sacrificed in order to make the drivetrain work perfectly. So I'm back to what is the correct uh, number of spacers and we'll see what happens. So despite the fact that the M9100 lever is supposed to sync with 11 speed, um, I'm convinced that it only syncs properly with the dedicated 9100 series 11 speed cassettes, um, despite any anybody's videos out there to the contrary. Of course, I could just be the odd one out not having luck, but this is not shifting well, even when it's mode converted to 11 speed. cannot get any higher. It 
just feels like the shifter's not letting out cable sufficiently. Could be that it's new and needs to work in, um, but again, I've double checked every fundamental hanger is straight. I've made sure that my dropouts are straight. Uh, I've made sure that my clutch is at the same tension. I've made sure that my chain is long enough. It just doesn't seem to be syncing with these existing parts. Um, and a couple times now, I've put my old stuff back on M8100 derailleur to go with shifter and it shifts spotlessly. So clearly um, there is a compatibility issue here. Alas, part de why the XDR M9100 shifter didn't work. Let's go to Koshani again. The main reason is that the 11 speed mode converter seems M9100 11 speed specific. And what I mean by that is it seems geared at the 11 speed cog number, but in the 12 speed spacing, this, this mystery 11 speed M9100 cassette that seems to have vanished from the face of the earth versus the original launch, um, similar to a Stockwell Day or a Stéphane Dion in Canadian politics lost into the wilderness of imagination and academic writings. Second reason, the multi-release, I've segmented the second reason. This doesn't really have to do with um, how it operates in a general sense, but it may have contributed to how it didn't operate in our specific experiment. Because it's a new shifter, I found that the multi-release was a little bit sluggish in letting out tension. So downshifting, going down the cassette towards the harder cogs, uh, being able to let out two gears at a time, it was doable, but I found it a little bit sluggish, and I think that that was translating into some, some stiction in you know, really making sure that when I had enough tension to get into the big cogs, I could then let out enough to get into the small cogs. As we saw with both parts of this experiment, Eagle on my drivetrain and the new XTR shifter on my drivetrain, the issue was, was really a compromise between being able to use the big cogs effectively and not use the small cogs or use the small cogs and not use the big cogs. Either way, just an unacceptable compromise. And so I feel um, that this stiction contributed. I think over time that would probably break in, uh, but that's not always the case. Just because something is XTR doesn't mean that it's always better. As a case in point, one of the Shimano shifters that's widely considered to be kind of a cult shifter in terms of just how intuitive and how effortless it operates mechanically is the Saint shifter. Saint is, is still the current top end uh, downhill drivetrain from Shimano. It's 10 speed because that's really all you need, if even that, doing downhill. And the Saint shifter is really popular because it uses incredibly smooth, uh, proper bearings, a very rigid aluminum construction, and the actuation is just like butter, especially when combined with the longer levers involved. Um, it takes almost no effort to get that thing to shift, and it's very commanding in each movement. It's sort of like a, a loud Swiss watch. That to me is, is the gold standard for shifters, that or perhaps the M9000 series XTR shifter, and I just didn't feel that the new one, in terms of its operation, was quite as smooth. Although I will say that the, uh, the lever ergonomics, that rubber texture, texture pad that I uh, mentioned earlier in the video, that was superb and probably an improvement over even sync. So where does that leave us? What's next? We're perfectionists here at Hogtown Spokes. I have drilled home that theme in my videos. It's time to put my money where my mouth is. I'm seeking the Valhalla of hybrid drivetrains. And I think the answer might be the final step in this logical progression through the high-end drivetrain forest, which is an XTR M9000 GS derailleur. Uh, I know that that will work with my stuff, and I'm hoping that it'll just be a little stiffer, a little more eagle-like versus the XT derailleur, but with, crucially, compatibility. So next week's video, we'll look at that as potentially the, the final uh, untried secret sauce in getting to this perfect key lime pie. Cue Dexter. Gonna have to get me XTR on my table. 
Stay tuned. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, guys.